Uh, meanwhile, the rare disease biotech company Ultragenics, presenting this year at the J.P. Morgan Healthcare Conference, announced it expects 20 percent revenue growth in 2024, profitability in 2026. Joining us now from the conference, Ultragenics President and CEO Dr. Emil Kakas. Dr. Kakas, thanks for being with us. I, I want to ask about the rare disease area first, because there's been a lot of attention to that in the market, especially recently. I know you've been working on accelerated approvals. What sort of shifts might be coming in that arena? Well, we've been working on rare disease. We've been on the public markets for the last 10 years, and they're are so many rare diseases that have no treatments at all. And that the, yet the science is strong. We can do very powerful things for them. We've been working hard to improve the process so the latest precision therapies, genetic gene therapies, can actually get applied for some of these diseases. What we've seen in the last year is the FDA, through Peter Marks, has been talking about improving the ability to use accelerated approval for some of these rarest diseases. He was here at J.P. Morgan saying the same. We're encouraged. We think the ability to use these accelerated pathways will allow a lot of horrible diseases to get their first ever treatment. It, it seems almost like hitting the, the, the lottery from an investor perspective, trying to figure out which of the companies in the rare disease space are going to have outsized success. What, what can you say about Ultragenics process? Uh, you know, clearly you, you are, are deeply technical in, in this arena and, and how it differs from other companies uh, and, and how they choose which rare diseases to work on. Well, genetics works on rare and ultra rare disease. We look at very clear, potent biology and we look for situations where we can accelerate the development through to an approval. A lot of our strategies relate to learning from patients, understanding the disease well, applying that in design of trials, and to develop trials that are accelerated in their approach and can generate the kind of data that compels one to use these treatments. We have four approved products, a drug like Crisfeta that is able to change the future of kids with a really bad bone disease called XLH. And that disease we did develop in just four years. So our strategy is one design of endpoints, learning from patients, accelerating development allows us to put in our first, here, first 10 years, four approvals and six programs in late stage development. So we're definitely in our goal is to lead the future of rare disease medicine. Um, when we talk about these rare diseases, I mean, these are not, these are not necessarily large markets. It's an, you're not talking about developing drugs that could be potentially, you know, multi-billion dollar blockbuster uh, treatments. So I, I just wonder how key it is to be able to have some changes or, or a push to that's realized in terms of that acceler accelerated approval rate to actually be able to realize a market here and make money on it. Well, it's extremely important, Morgan, because the probability of success is greatly enhanced with those biomarkers and the number of patients required and the lot, amount of time required can be shortened, and that allows you to reduce the development cost and get to the market faster. And that's what's really important in making those smaller markets possible and, and achievable. So I think those are really important for what we, we need to do as a company in accelerating the transformation of good science into great medicines.